It was an hour and a half to work in the morning and an hour and a half to get home. And three hours a day commuting, just, you know, it gets to you. So I'm Kev, uh, I'm a mountain bike race organiser and I'm living off grid in this truck in these beautiful forest locations, building mountain bike trails. So when I, when I worked in offices, I'm an industrial chemist by profession and have worked for the likes of AstraZeneca, Unilever, uh, Total Fina. I was always in, in an office, but I loved getting out into the countryside. But for, for most of my working life, I had to do a lot of, of miles, big commutes. I just got fed up of the commute. It was an hour and a half to work in the morning and an hour and a half to get home. And three hours a day commuting, it gets to you. It might be that three hours on average, but some days you can be sat there for an hour and a half in a traffic jam on the way home or the way to work. And it's not, not good for, for my mental health. I progressed from that to doing this job where I could be outside building mountain bike trails, running the events, and uh, the, the van life just slowly took over. You soon realise the less commuting you have to do, the more time that you have, and it just makes life easier. And on top of that, you get this view. <laughs> and it's a cracking view. So I, uh, I got this Mercedes 814, it's a 1995. I bought it uh, at the end of 2018. And I saw this on Facebook Marketplace and was like, that's what I need. It's got a big garage, it's, I like an old Merc. So I, I went and got it. So I've been mountain biking since the late 80s. 2010, I got back on the bike. And then when I quit my office job at the end of 2014 and didn't need to commute an hour and a half to work in the, in the T4, then I got the Sprinter, and then when the Sprinter wasn't big enough, I got the, the Vario was a, a executive mini coach. I then got this. So that's like my, my journey through van life. I mean, I've even toured Europe in a Polo where I stripped out everything but the driver's seat and put a bed in and had my bikes on the back and, and managed in a, in a Polo. Now I'm, I'm here doing this and enabling me to be here for many weeks at a time. This is a, a private estate between Lake Windermere that you can almost see behind me and Coniston, which is over there. They have various events here. So I run the mountain bike events. They've got quite a lot going on and sort of all, all year round. It is well used despite being very isolated up here. There, there is actually quite a lot going on on this estate of the, the various places I get to, to live. This is my favourite place. And Freya likes it too. She loves it up here. So a quick lap of the van. So this solar panel I only put on there this winter. It might look wonky, but it is designed so that when I pull it out to face the same south as that one in winter, uh, that it's a bit of an angle. Uh, and that's been really good. It used to be on the roof, uh, but in winter, you're much better with a vertical panel. So I moved it to the side and made it pivot out. Uh, but for now, it's just there. So the wires look a bit untidy. The uh, massive uh, black tape you see there is actually my, my 4G aerial. <laughs> but because the van's quite tall and because I spend a lot of time in forests and up forest tracks, I keep knocking things off. So uh, it still works. So I keep using it. So back of me, Lou for emptying Lou comes from the uh, from the outside. But this one is where I uh, keep some of the levelings. And because it's a big van, rather than your usual levelers, <laughs> I've got quite big, chunky levelers. Not a heater many people have. It's actually an American RV propane heater. So this is the the exit for that. Oh, the chimney. Yeah. So. As you can see, I've got the same registration plate on here as the truck because this tow's behind. 
but that makes my life much easier. It means once I'm here, this is basically a cabin on wheels and it stops and then I can bob to the shops or go and work in the forest uh, using the chimney. I basically use it like a covered quad. For me, it's very useful. I enjoy it. And as you can see, it's uh, covered in mud because it gets used off-road. They are absolutely fantastic. Even tow a little trailer sometimes when I need extra kit. Got quite a decent sized garage on the bike, but I do need to carry quite a lot of kit with me. More belly lockers full of stuff to level the van. So my gas is in the back, carrying a lot of gas. So I can do a long time in winter if I need it for heating. When it is in the depths of winter, I also put in a wood burner. That's not in at the moment. I did have a light outside that was quite good, but then that stopped working this winter because that's what cheap Chinese lights do. It's definitely a cheaper way of life, particularly now I've got set up with, you know, with, with everything that I've got sort of power wise. Yeah, I, I, I can live very cheaply, particularly as I like to cook some stuff, do some batch cooking. You can't buy a chili like I make my own chili and I can do a big batch and freeze it, have then two months worth of one chili a week sort of thing. The sort of day to day costs for me are quite cheap, you know, £10 a day for food and spends. But I think a lot of people, they think, oh, I'll go and live in a van and it'll be cheap. But you either need to spend a lot on the van at the start or you need to keep upgrading. It's cheap once you've spent the money and a lot of people think they can manage with less. And, you know, you, you can manage with less, but it's always easier with more. So there's a balance there between how much you spend and, and how easy life is. I want to be able to live as easy as possible that I can put all of my effort into the, into the business. I don't have debts, I'd paid off my mortgage. I don't have kids, I don't have a expensive missus or anything. So if I can tick over and, and have this lifestyle that I want, then I'm, I'm happy enough and that's, you know, that's, that's what I've set myself up for and I, I've succeeded, I think. I quite like my own company, <laughs> which for, the, for this sort of lifestyle where I am, you know, the, in, in 2021, I was here for, for 13 weeks on my own where there was still a little bit of sort of COVID stuff around. But I, I, I quite like that. But there are times when you need friends and, and whatever and I'm quite lucky that people do come to help me do what I do during the day. Some people who, who, who volunteer and, and come and do a little bit, uh, the odd person that's part of my team, it's quite good. I can get people to bring me milk and bread that are sort of the things I need on a, a weekly basis without having to, to go out. Also because I'm doing this for events, there'll be a thousand people at the event here at the end of May. I get a lot of social interaction that sort of once a month when I have an event and then get to be on my own <laughs> for a bit and, until the next event. So there's a balance and you know sometimes I do feel it but also with the world today with WhatsApp, Facebook, YouTube, it, it, I make it work but it certainly isn't for everybody. I say I'm quite happy on, on my own. I think if there was no one, and if I, certainly if I didn't have the dog, she loves it. In the first couple of years, with this much freedom and her puppy, there were some times where she got lost and it was a bit annoying. But no, I mean she she loves it, and it it, it took some work in that first couple of years, but she I think she understood that if she was good, she would get a lot of freedom. She knows where I am. I often don't know where she is. She gets the cab, put all her dog beds in the cab and she'll sit there with, with the view because you know, you've got the big windscreen and the side windows and she just watches everything that is going on. She definitely loves this lifestyle. When you do see the inside, you'll see that despite it being big, I've got that much stuff in there and it is just set up for me and the dog and, but that, that's all I need, it's only for, for me and Freya so that's what we do.
before we go inside, this is not an Instagram van. This is the van of a man who works in forests and has a dog that runs in and out. And, you know, I've got walking boots on. So it's, a, it's definitely a lived in van. So I did think about tidying up a little bit, but you said you wanted to see the real van life and the real van life was that I've done some washing and you can't hang washing outside. So here's my pants hung up on me in, inside washing machine because that's how it is. And some jeans that I wore the other day, bit of muck on them, hang them up. They'll be good for tomorrow. Hang these up tonight and you know, keep, keep <laughs> messing around. I quite like to spread out and lounge, get my feet up rather than sit down, uh, especially makes it easier with, uh, with Freya. Uh, so I leave this sort of half set up as a, a bed and I get me, uh, get me feet up and, and lounge out. This is Freya's tub of dog food that also doubles as my uh, laptop stand and I have a little uh, speaker because laptops don't have the best volume so I do find a little speaker just helps. Under here is 250 litres of water. This is my front winterised tank because it's inside. My bed that I use is the over cab bed. I'll try and move some of my washing, draw drying out the way. I said that I had 250 litres of water at the front. Under the back, I have a 300 litre water tank. Both of them can feed a normal camper van 70 litre uh, tank that I use as a header tank, which is in the garage. This is my whiteboard that tells me what I'm doing, <laughs> but it also doubles as my fridge. And I can spend a lot of time off grid because I can fit a lot of stuff in my fridge. A freezer full of stuff and hence I'm self-sufficient. I mean, most people don't have a, a freezer, but I do. And But yeah, so I have a full fridge and a full freezer because I've not been here long and I'm going to be here a while. So I, <laughs> I stack it up. Dishwasher, six and a half litres of water and it'll do like three days worth of washing in one go without me doing anything other than putting it in. And um, for the water saving alone, it's just fantastic. Tucked in this corner is the washing machine. It is a proper washing machine, slightly smaller, popular with people on narrow boats. That's one of the things that has kept me being very self-sufficient and not needing to drive into town. So I've got a little uh, shower unit. These things are brilliant if you're showering you can use rainwater i can stick this under a corner of the van where the water's dripping it'll fill up if it's raining or uh, go and grab some from a stream or something that's not potable and i can use that uh, the heating on the induction hob or gas depending what i need but i like this setup the little showers are so good and they're so good at being able to just use whatever other waters around so i can keep my potable water for drinking. I have a two kilowatt fan heater here. I can use this on my battery system. So this, this is my little electrical cupboard. This is my 100 amp MPPT. Uh, and then I've got a Victron uh, 2000 KVA inverter. That's my always on inverter. Tucked behind it is a 3000 watt Giandel inverter. So a lot of people tell me that I can't do what I already do, which is always quite amusing because it's not like, I'm gonna do that, I've got this, it's gonna work, you know. I've been doing this for a number of years and been building slowly up to it. So, you know, when people say, that's wrong, you can't do it, there's no way that works. It's a little bit funny that way. <laughs> in all honesty, I will probably live in a van until I'm in an old people's home. So I will, I will do this event organising for as, as long as I can manage, but it is quite physical. And then I will probably sell things that I don't need. Hopefully one day retire. I love the van life. I'd like to, to travel, but yeah, we will, we will see. But yeah, I have no 
no intention of moving back into a house. I think it's a lot harder than, than Instagram and the, the current trend of, of van life makes it. I mean, I'm not your typical van lifer who is, is traveling around and, and having problems of where to park and, and you know people giving them grief for parking where the locals don't want them. I don't have those issues. But one of the things I see a lot of people trying to do is building the perfect van or getting everything sorted just right. That's not needed. Just get out there, do what you can within whatever setup limitations you, you have. Go out there, enjoy it. As I say, I, I started doing this and I was doing like five days and then back home and I've, I've slowly built up to something that works for me. Uh, so and what works for one person doesn't work for everyone. But if you've got something to start with, do that. Don't spend money trying to make the perfect van. Use that money to go and use the van. So thanks for watching. I hope that you've taken something from, uh, from this and that's inspired some people to realise what is possible. But most importantly, leave no trace. Hi guys, thanks for watching the video. Thanks to Kev for showing us around and telling his story. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, then subscribe to our channel and we'll see you on the next one.